Hello everyone, thanks very much again for joining me. This is Jack Marshall here from the London Contemporary School of Piano. Going to be another blues one today and uh, it's concerning soul one in particular so I'm going to show you how to start improvising using these blues piano riffs. Just a quick thing before we get started and that is to say to head on over to our website that's contemporaryschoolofpiano.com and ask for our free resources pack. Loads of really good stuff on there, definitely worth checking out so be sure you do that. Okay, let's, uh, let's get into it. Just a quick thing before we get going. Um, it's worth mentioning that I'm going to be using a lot of the stuff that we looked at in the last video I released, which was how to play Boogie Woogie on piano. So if you're struggling to follow this along or you're not sure what's happening, then maybe worth going to check out that video first. It'll, uh, it'll go hand in hand with this one. So I get asked a lot about how to improvise over blueses, and there's obviously many different ways you can do this. Um, but I'm going to show you some of the ways that I like to think about it and how I did it when I first started learning. So I have a few different riffs that I want to show you and they sort of vary in difficulty. I'm going to start with something quite simple and then we're going to work our way up to something a little bit more advanced by the end of it. So this should, uh, depending on where you are in this already, uh, you may find that there's something in here for you that's useful. <laughs> So let's break down this first riff. Uh, it's relatively straightforward, and it's worth noting that it has a pickup uh, in it. So it doesn't technically start on the first uh, beat of the bar. Uh, it starts a little bit before. We have this sort of just before it there. So bearing in mind when you begin your counting here, when you start this, it'll be one, two, three. See, it starts on the and of three. So one and two and three and four and then we're at the start of the bar there. So I like to start with my thumb on E, and uh, I usually use my second or third finger to pivot off the E flat, but I would make sure that the E stays there with the thumb, and that's because now I can reach up to B flat and D with my third and fifth finger. And from there, it's quite handy because now I can use this sort of pivot motion between my fingers. So I have five and three on B flat and D. Then I can use my second and fourth finger to hit A and C. And now I have my thumb and third finger ready to hit G and B flat. So that all together. Not worried about speed, just trying to understand how our fingers are supposed to move here. So just do that slowly a few times. So the, the rhythm of this is uh, slightly different on the second time round, you probably noticed. So that's all on the beat for the first half. And the second half is exactly the same notation, but I just pushed the last bit of it into the, uh, into the beat a bit more. So it's playing on the off beats a little and it's, uh, it has a bit more swing to it. Just put two quavers on the end there. So it just gives it a little bit of rhythmic variety and it breaks up it being sounding a little too um, rigid. So some people uh, sometimes struggle to believe me when I tell them that this is a very common way of learning this as far as speed goes because um, a lot of the time when you're trying to uh, apply riffs in the right hand that fit with a particular left hand, depending on the difficulty, you have to really slow that down to the point where it's snail speed. I mean, like really almost like there's not even a rhythm recognizable. Um, so when, when you're doing this, if you're doing quite complicated ones, uh, you know, sometimes what is necessary is this... that kind of speed you know so whatever is the uh, ideal place for you don't be disheartened if it's like quite slow and you feel like this is just you know this is just too slow trust me I've I've been there and <laughs> and you need to just whatever the sweet spot is for you just find it and work with that and then again work on bringing up the speed later 
but just working out the mechanic, as we've said before. Let's work out how this uh, works together. So we have the pickup bar first. Relatively straightforward. That's going to happen on its own. And then the first thing we do is land together. Right? Right here. The left hand has one more to go then after that. Okay, and we'll just, again, breaking it down into chunks. So the next part. One more time, a bit slower. Okay, let's keep moving. So we bring that up a little bit. Okay, so that's, uh, and you can hear it almost. When you start that riff off, it's almost saying like, uh, like uh, one, two, three, like, you know. You know, if that, that helps you keep in time there, just keep that in mind. And then we use the fourth beat to do that pickup. Yeah. So like that, you see? So if we carry on to the second half. That last little bit there is a slightly more trickier because um, we're still in the middle of finishing the pattern in the left hand where it's still on C and A. So it's on the last half of that second shape, which is where people can sometimes catch a snag there, right? So it's on the beat. Another push. That's the riff that, that you can actually use for the entirety, right? That's that's all of the work you need to do for that one in, in those 12 bars. Because a lot of these riffs can often sustain an entire 12 bars on their own. And then you just throw in another one and throw in another one. And that you see people play this style of music a lot like that. They have one pattern that works for the entire 12 bars. And then they'll have another pattern working through the entire 12 bars again. And uh, it's this sort of, you're almost like working through uh, a gears of a car. You know, you're, you're taking it up every time. And, uh, and you can do that both with the left and right hand patterns. Um, we'll cover right hand mostly today. So we are going to, of course, have to do this in F and G because we're in a 12 bar blues in C. And I want to show you a, a relatively straightforward way of transposing any riff that you may have into another place. It's worth remembering where your fingers start off. And sometimes you don't have to like chart every single note uh, within the riff, but you can you can just make a note of where it begins and where it ends. That's sometimes a good way to begin with this. So my riff begins on the major third. We we have we of course have this. So that my first note on this is on the third of where we are. So and uh, I can sort of make a mental note of how my hand is behaving, right? I mean, the first thing I do is hit a semitone behind. So that's the first thing. So if I wanted to do this in F, I would just apply the same number, but the one is now changed. So one was C in this, but if I wanted to move this riff to another key, which is now F, so F is now our one, so my thumb needs to be on the three of that, which is an A. The way it behaved was I would hit a semitone uh, back first, so that would be, you see, and you see where we're kind of going with this, it's just sort of making a note, and what you'll probably find is your hands actually go to the place it's supposed to automatically, because it feels the same, it's more, of, this is very much a muscle memory sort of exercise that I'm trying to push on this, and it's just kind of getting the flow of feeling how your hands move, and despite the notes being slightly different, uh, the motion of how your hands move can transfer over to other keys relatively quickly. And if we look at that, we have a B flat and a D. And in the context of C, that is a seventh and a ninth, or a second, right? So if we do that in F, we have E flat and G now, you see? So that line in F then, let's play that out. So 
So that um, right hand's fingering stays the same. Five and three, two and four, thumb and three. Five and three, two and four, thumb and three. And rhythm stays exactly the same. It's on the beat first. And then the push at the end. The last one then, G. Now this is an interesting one because if we think about it, this is a uh, two bar pattern. Um, so if we were to count that out, we have this uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You see? So that's two bars worth of uh, music there. Now when you have a blues in uh, in C, that's a 12 bar blues, normally uh, it goes from five to four to one at the last four bars. And that last four bars, um, the G usually only lasts for one bar. And then it goes straight to F for the next bar and then C twice or C and G at the end, whatever you like. So we have an issue now because we can't really complete the full riff uh, before the left hand changes. So you have a few options of what you can do with that. So we start with G. And then I'm going to use the fourth beat of the current bar we're in to start off the F pattern. Because this riff has a pickup bar, remember, so it, it starts a little bit before the first beat of the bar every time. So I need to, and so we need to bear in mind where the F started, which was on the major third, and then we do the chromatic thing like that, and that needs to happen on the fourth bar, fourth beat, to beg your pardon, of the G in the left hand. So that's. You see? And you notice I did the second half of the pattern uh, in F. So I did the first half of the pattern where it's on the beat in G, and then the second half of the rhythmic pattern of this on F. So the riff technically hasn't been interrupted. Um, it's just you've been... You, you've you've transposed it halfway through. Okay, so that was that one, and uh, I'm just gonna rattle off a few other ones here so we can uh, get through them. So the next one, uh, a little bit more complicated, but uh, same thing, same idea. Learn it slowly, work out how it works together with the left hand, build the speed up, and we can probably use this over the whole 12 bars as well. So it says gear two, you could say. <laughs> get the idea so again relatively straightforward so this is very similar to the last pattern we did in the other video so if you've done that then you'll be quite familiar with this uh, it comes from this sort of <laughs> this upper, like this bottom middle top uh, movement that we did and the way we start it off is that we start with the top movement which is G and B flat <laughs> moving down to our second and fourth finger on F and A and then I actually move these two fingers to the next place as well, which is E flat and G. And then from there, I just slide my second finger off to the major third. And then my thumb is there. So that's the first half. Then the second half of this, then once I land on my thumb there, I'll be crossing over with my second finger on A, thumb on G, and then I have my third finger ready for the C, second finger on A, and then now I'm gonna hit this chord, which is basically a C minor triad inverted and I, th I like putting a bit of a minor hit on the end because I just think it sounds a little bit dirtier you know that sort of <laughs> rather than it just is a little bit too bright for me that last one so yeah I made it a minor chord but you could obviously make it a major chord if you want and that's just by taking that minor third to an E so putting this together with the left hand uh, again I would do this very slowly, no time needed, just kind of working your way through, working out when this hand lands, when this hand lands, and just working through it like that. So first thing, all together. And the next bit. It's worth bearing in mind here on that one, it's E flat and G whilst we're still in the second shape of that left hand. And then 
from here. Yeah, very much uh, to the rhythm of the left hand on that last bit. Okay, and then moving on from here. C and A with the left hand, and A and G with the right hand. Right, and just to move on for the end of it. So that last bit here, the, the interesting part about this is the push of that right hand's chord. So we'll be hitting it while we're on the second shape of that um, left hand. So that's... So that all together. So that's the full riff. Again, you can transpose this into other keys. Uh, and you can use exactly the same method that we used. We think, okay, where did we start? Uh, where did we land? And, you know, can our hands remember anything about the movement in between just to assist it, you know? So we are going to, again, come across the same issue that we had earlier, right? Which is uh, for the last four bars of a C blues, we normally go to the five, the four, and the one. Uh, so that would be G, F, and C. And each of those being one bar each. Um, so we have a two-bar pattern here again. So this time what I'm going to do, though, is something slightly different. Instead of doing the first half in one key and then doing the second half of that riff in the other key, I'm going to play the first half of this riff in G, then I'm going to restart this, the first half again and do it in F. So it's almost like you're just cutting it short and then repeating it again. So that would sound like this. You see what I've done? I've just I've just borrowed the first part of this riff and just did it again. And then what I can do then when I return to our home key, which is C, is do that riff in its entirety, which should sound quite nice. You see? So that's how I would get around that. Okay, so this last one that we're going to be looking at will be the most complicated out of the three we've done so far. Uh, it'll take a little bit of breaking down, but uh, we'll work through it and uh, we'll just hear how it sounds first. So it'll go like this. <laughs> So that's the sort of riff there. So we have this right hand here that starts on a minor third and a fifth of our thumb here. Yeah? Just remember that's worth remembering how we start because when we have to transpose. So the first thing I do is I put my thumb and fourth finger on C G and E flat. And I have my third and second finger ready to just roll down on the D and, uh, D and C. This is quite a quick rhythm that we're using. So obviously when we bring the speed up to this, um, we want to make sure that we have the fingers underneath our hands to do it. The next bit after that, I cross over straight away with my third and fifth finger on F and A. Might take a few times just to get used to that landing. Now I have the second and fourth finger to land perfectly there on the E flat and G. that people struggle with this particular part is that we're basically spelling out a C major chord but because it's so fast they try and play it like machine gun fire it's like very fast and to the point where their fingers just kind of crumble under uh, each other but slowing it right down you see it's still part of the rhythm it's actually part of the rhythm that happens at the start that bit there matches this rhythm see so it's the same rhythm there. The fingers I use for this, once I land on my second and fourth finger, I slide off that E, and it's just my fourth finger on G, and my thumb's ready for C, so it's... Quite easy, right? So doing that all together. Okay, just to finish this off, so once we do that...
you see I've borrowed the the ending of the second riff that we did yeah so just made the first part a bit more complicated so you do want to keep your hand relatively uh, loose with this because when you do bring it up to speed those notes there are going to sound very very quick indeed so you're gonna wanna not be tense when you do this yeah keep it relaxed Now, I, um, to restart the riff again, I usually hit that G and E flat twice. You probably heard me do it in the example. And I do that just to kind of reset me back into the, into the riff again when I repeat it. So yeah, that's the whole thing. Now, putting this together with the left hand, this one might be a little bit more tricky, but I'll show you how to break it down. So that D and C in the right hand there happens in between the first two shapes in the left hand. Sorry, not the first two shapes, the first two times of the first shape in the left hand. If that's not confusing, I hope. So it's... Yeah. Then we land when the left hand's hit its second shape on that F and A in the right hand. Remember, just build it in blocks. So that quick bit where it goes E, G, E, and C, so when we're spelling out that triad, the right hand in this, it comes down when we hit the E, comes off, and then comes back when we get to that C in the right hand. The very last bit. And we already covered how to do that last part of this uh, in the second riff that we did, right? So it's that. So there's just one thing I want to say um, about transposing riffs uh, in, in, in different keys when you're playing a blues. There is such a thing as painting the whole thing with one brush in this. So if you're in the key of C and your home key is C, then you can use riffs or scale shapes uh, within that home key and use it to play over the entirety of the left hand. Uh, despite the fact that it's going from G to G to F to C and things, you can often keep the, um, the pattern that works in C over the whole thing. So if I was to take this pattern... <laughs> I'm going to do it again in C, but I'm going to move to my left hand in, in, in F. And it still sort of works, right? Uh, you can, you, I used to do this over the entirety of, a, uh, of a every single bar of a 12-bar blues, including when it went to G, F, and C. I still kept in C, and it still works. So if I did that very quickly... <laughs> last bit there you see I did the same thing as we did in the second riff which was I took the first half of that pattern and I restarted it again uh, but I still kept in the same key I just restarted it with G and F you know so it, you again get a little bit creative with this it's a, it's a good thing to practice so I'll play you a very quick example of me hitting all of these three patterns that we've looked at and showing you how you can play them and use them uh, when you're performing a 12 bar blues so you see, so I mean, that's just a bit of me just chucking them in at random there. And you can be a bit more mindful about what you actually use. And uh, you, you may have a, a different opinion on what sounds better than the next than, than, than I do. Uh, that's sort of the point, right? You're developing your own voice here. And even though we're using preset licks and riffs, um, we are, what we do with them is sort of our choice. So it's sort of, it's sort of improvising in a sense. Uh, you're improvising with prearranged ideas. All of the riffs that we've uh, covered here today, incidentally, will be available on our website. Um, so do go ahead and over and grab those if you're looking for some notated versions of these. 
So I hope this has helped clear the mist a little bit of what you could potentially do over your solos. Um, uh, playing blues and licks I is a huge part of this and, and uh, often it's just the case of finding more and more and adding them on top of each other. So hopefully this has added a little bit more ammunition to what you could potentially do when playing blueses. Remember that uh, doing it slow is very necessary sometimes and it doesn't matter how slow it is, as soon as your hands understand what they're supposed to do, you'll be amazed at how fast you can bring up the speed. But um, don't charge in straight away, see if you can take your time. Otherwise, I'd like to say thank you very much again for watching. I appreciate it, and uh, I, will, I will catch you soon. Cheers.